The Russian military is seeing an influx of older contract soldiers who are largely seen as detrimental to its war effort in Ukraine, the investigative news outlet Vyostka reported, citing anonymous military and parliamentary sources. Volunteer fighters aged 45 and over now make up half of new recruits in Moscow, a senior mayor's office source was cited as saying. The average age of recruits has risen from 40 at the start of the year to about 50, said another Moscow mayor's office source. They're all sick, a Russian soldier fighting in Ukraine was quoted as saying of these troops. Their legs hurt, their heads hurt, and they're slow. The information was confirmed by a serviceman who is on the contact line in the occupied part of Ukraine's Donetsk region. It has lost about half of the killed and wounded near Chasov Yar, roughly 500 people, he said. They are still sending us additional personnel. Half of those who come are over 50, maybe even more, and not all of them reach their positions. One of the mobilized soldiers from the Luhansk direction told Verstka about the same thing. Only old men are going into battle. Where is our command looking? He asks. One of the airborne officers fighting in the Kherson direction also told Verstka about the age imbalance. According to him, the situation with new contract soldiers is sad. The number of older volunteers began to grow in August, and there are even older ones, 60 years old. A source in the Moscow mayor's office said, citing data on recruitment for contract service in the capital. According to him, at the beginning of the year, the average age of recruits was about 40 years old. Now it is about 50. Older men explain their desire to serve with the following words. I'm already 55. NATO tanks in Russia? Let the young ones sit at home. Everyone in my yard has gone. My friends won't understand me. My whole family is there, the source says. Russia's armed forces have been carrying out a mass campaign to promote contract service since the spring of 2023. In recent months, regional and federal authorities have offered increasing financial and other incentives to bolster its ranks in Ukraine without turning to a new round of politically risky mobilization. Vyostka's report on the country's aging manpower is in part corroborated by the BBC's Russian service and the independent news website MediaZona's research into Russia's verified military death toll. The outlets identified 2,475 volunteer soldiers over 45 years old who died in Ukraine so far this year, a figure that's half of Russia's overall death toll in 2024. As reported, Ukraine attacked the oil depot in Feodosia on the night of October the 7th. The marine oil terminal, the largest in Crimea, in terms of oil products, transshipment volume, came under attack. A strong fire started. Apparently, drones hit the facility in several places as photos with three columns of thick black smoke appeared in social networks. The city authorities introduced a regime of technogenic emergency of a municipal nature, restricting access of people and transport to the affected area. No casualties were reported. Ukrainian media wrote that the facility was attacked by drones and Russian media that there were two missiles. Defense Express expert Valery Ryabik voiced his opinion regarding the events in Feodosia on October the 7th. He does not rule out that Kiev carried out an attack on the oil depot using new weapons. He did not rule out that, most likely, these were medium-range drones, but which can carry an explosive weighing up to 20 kilograms. It is possible that the range of the drones is from 500 to 600 kilometers. Ryabik does not rule out that Kiev used one of the three types of Palyanitsia drone missile in yesterday's operation. It is also possible that the strikes were carried out with long-range missiles supplied to Kiev by the West. We are talking about the British Storm Shadow missiles. The most interesting thing is that the Pantsir air defense system has been installed at the oil depot since the autumn of 2022, but it was unable to intercept all the air targets that attacked the terminal. Meanwhile, the fire at the oil depot in Feodosia has entered its second day. The media reports that five fuel tanks are burning. The occupation authorities have resettled residents of the private sector from the emergency zone. Late yesterday evening, one of the burning fuel tanks exploded. So far, they have not been able to extinguish the oil depot in Crimea in Feodosia, which caught fire on October the 7th as a result of a drone attack. The Russian-appointed mayor of the city, Igor Kachenko, said that work on the elimination of the fire continues and to ensure the safety of people living near the site of the emergency in the area of the Black Sea embankment and near Kamishi evacuation was carried out.
In particular, 1,047 people were sent to temporary accommodation centers, hotels, and boarding houses. Kachenko added that the evacuees were examined by medics. It is noteworthy that the Pantsir C-1 air defense system was deployed on the territory of the port where the terminal is located. This was found out by Radio Svaboda journalists after analyzing satellite images. However, the unit failed to repel the attack of the Ukrainian drones. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Tuesday that Ukrainian forces are maintaining the necessary pressure on Russia in the Kursk border region, which it captured two months ago. In his nightly video address from Kiev, Zelensky also announced two new sanctions packages on those who have betrayed Ukraine and also on military production in Russia. <laughs> Росію на цьому напрямку. Детально сьогодні доповідав керівник гор Буданов про процеси, які відбуваються в системі ворога і наш на них вплив. Також була доповідь міністра оборони Умірова щодо деталей співпраці з партнерами. Сьогодні застосовано два нових пакети санкцій щодо тих, хто зрадив Україну, також щодо військового виробництва в Росії, тих юридичних та фізичних осіб, які працюють на терор. І наші українські санкції, наш тиск на ворога, ми будемо і надалі робити синхронним з усіма в світі, хто так само, як і українці, хоче справжнього миру.